Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at pure functions in JavaScript. Now, pure functions are an important concept to understand because they're going to make your code simpler and more importantly, it's going to make your code more testable. Now, I'm going to be showing you uh, examples in JavaScript. However, this applies to almost any other language. So let's first have a look at what are the rules for a pure function. Well, I like to keep it simple. There are two main rules to follow. Number one is a pure function does not have any side effects. Example, modifying the state of an object or some other variable. Okay. And the second rule is it always returns the same output given the same input. Now, what's also included in this second point or the second rule is that uh, these pure functions always return a value. So that value is going to be the same uh, given the same input. So let's have a look at the most basic form of a pure function. Let's make a new function declaration here called add. It's going to take in two numbers a and b and it's going to simply return a plus b. Now let's go through the rules. Number one, uh, does it have any side effects? No, it only uses these values a and b to give us the addition of them both so it does not have any side effects that's the first one passed the second one here does it always return the same output given the same input the uh, the answer of course is yes so if i was to say console.log and i add uh you know five and ten i'll save this go inside the browser here and we get 15 in the console if I was to call add and then 10 and five, so the same input, um, that might be the other way around. So I did five and 10, but 10 and five, you get the point though. Um, the same input gives us the same output. So this function here is uh, a pure function. All right, now let's have a look at what is an impure function or not a pure function. So let's use the same add example, but this time we're going to make a variable called number of additions equal to zero. And then within here, we're going to say number of additions plus plus. Now let's run this code in the browser. You know, we get 15. If I was to refresh, we keep getting 15. So the second point there, it always returns the same output given the same input. This rule is passed. However, the first one, of course, has not passed. That's because there is a side effect to calling this function. The number of additions variable is going to increase every time we call it. If I go back in the browser here and I log out the number of additions, we get one because we just called it on page load. If I was to call it again, 10 and five, then check the number of additions again, we now get two. So calling this function has a side effect and that side effect was increase this variable. Therefore, it is not pure. Okay, let's see another example and I'm going to let you guys guess whether or not it is pure or impure. Let's make a new constant up here called info equal to a new object. Okay. Inside here, we're going to have number of additions equal to zero, just like we did earlier with the variable. And then within the add function, we're going to accept an object. Now, this is going to say object dot number of additions plus plus. And now when I call the add function, we're going to pass in the info. So this time, we're actually going to be passing through um, the same input every time, right? We have the, the 5, 10 and the info, or at least that's what it looks like, right? So 5, 10 info we're passing in and then it's getting the objects from the parameter list to then increment that variable. So let's call this a few times. So three times, okay, go back in the browser here. And we get 15, 15, 15. Once again, the same output given the same input um, for the most part. If I now check the number of additions inside the info, we have three. So is this a pure function? The answer is no. Even though we pass in the object to update, it is still having a side effect to update external state. So just because you pass it in, as a object doesn't mean it's not gonna you know, have a side effect. So this is still an impure function, okay? Let's have a look at now another, uh, another function example. And this one here is going to add once again, but I'll remove this info object. And this one is now going to 
um, include, so this right here is the first example, so A plus B, but now we're also going to add a math.random. We're going to say math.random, okay, uh, times 10, then we have a plus 1 after the math.floor. So this here is going to give us a number between 1 and 10 inclusive. So if I say 5 plus 10, so 15, then it's going to add a random number between 1 and 10. So we might get different results here. Let's go in the browser and we get 16, 20 and 23. So you may have guessed already, this here is an impure function because even though uh, there are no side effects because we don't modify any states by calling uh, these functions here, um, you know, the, the output is different given the same input. So 510 gives us a different output and we can sort of see here how something like this is going to be hard to test. If you can't predict what the output would be given the input, how are you supposed to, uh, you know, test uh, what the function result is given a set of input. So this is why it is important to, uh, you know, make your application as uh, as full of as many pure functions as you can because it's going to make it a lot easier to test. Okay, so we've covered all of these pretty simple examples. Let's have a look now at something a little bit more complex and may question whether or not a function is pure. So let's scrap all of these add examples and go to a class declaration. So let's say class number wrapper within this class here, basically it's just going to have a number called n. So I'll say this.n equal to n. And it's just going to wrap around a number which you pass in. So for example, if I say const, uh, let's just call this nw equal to a new number wrapper and then pass through here nine, okay. If I console.log nw, save it, go back in the browser, we get this object with the n equal to 9. So it just simply wraps over a number. Now, let's add an add method. And let's do a just like that. So essentially, when I call the add method, I'm going to return whatever we pass in plus this.n. So if I was to say console log nw dot add five, nine plus five is going to be 14. So if I save and go back in the browser here, we get 14, okay? Now, is this a pure function? Let's explore a few more things here. If I was to keep calling nw add five, we keep getting, uh, we keep getting 14. So this kind of suggests that this is a pure function because there are no side effects, there's no state being modified, and it always returns the same output given the same input. However, let's make this a little bit more difficult. What if I was to then go down here after the first call to add five, what if I now say nw.n is equal to uh, 10 instead, okay? I'll get rid of the last add as well. So, we log out 5 plus 9, 14, then we change n to be 10, then we call nw.add5 once again. So now we're going to get 15, right? So if I go back in the browser here, we get 14, then 15, because of course n has changed. But we provided the same input to the function or the method. We're still providing 5, however, the output has changed. So always returns the same output given the same input, does that pass? Is this a pure function? Well, I did a bit of research and based on my observation, now I could be wrong about this, please uh, you know, check this for yourself or discuss it in the comments below. However, this to me seems like a pure function, okay? The reason why I believe this here is a pure function is because you have two different ways of providing input. Because this here is a class method or an instance method of the NW object here, your input also comes from the this object itself, right? So this input and this input 
given that they're the same, each time I call add, we're going to keep getting 15. So the input here is not just in the form of a parameter or an argument, it's also in the form of this on the object. So it does make it a little bit harder to determine if it is a pure function when you have methods because uh, typically when you have a method it's going to access the state of the object with the this keyword and potentially modify it. But if you do this correctly, then you can still consider these kinds of methods to be pure. Of course, if you were to go around and say this.n is now equal to a or something like that, it now becomes impure because you're having a side effect here. But um, because we're not actually modifying the state of the object, it could still be considered to be pure. Okay. Now, the last thing to mention here quickly is a couple of examples of uh, pure and impure methods in JavaScript built in. So an example of a pure method, or should I say an impure or non-pure method would be the array push. Because when you call array.push, you are of course adding a new value to the array. So you are having a side effect, you're modifying some state, okay? An example of an of, uh, of a pure method would be concat because when you call concat it actually returns you a new array and doesn't modify the existing array so concat would be um, of course a uh, a pure method now of course the math.random which I showed you earlier is also considered to be impure because you get a different uh, output each time and that's basically it. I'm sure you get the point by now. Um, as long as you follow these two rules here, you're gonna be good for pure functions. So that is pure functions in JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.